Hi, I'm a first generation Chinese migrant who is very interested in Australian politics. To many members of the Chinese community, Labour Party has always been this pro-China and pro-migrants party. Now, you can imagine how surprised they were to Labour's support of the government's proposal of a coronavirus independent inquiry and the consequential exchanges with China. And then there's Christina Kennedy's call for a migration program that put Australian workers first. In other words, a program less welcoming to migrants. So my question is, what drove these drastic changes of Labour Party? Penny Wong. Well, first, Mr Liu, I think I've explained our position on the inquiry, which is not a an anti-China position. I, I agree with Michael. I think it's in China's interest. I think it's in all of humanity's interest to understand uh, how this pandemic began, how it spread and how we can prevent it uh, occurring again. Uh, in terms of uh, migration, I would make this point. Uh, we've been talking for some time about the problems with uh, temporary migrant workers. Uh, and those problems really uh, are, arrive as a consequence of the exploitation of those workers. We've seen some um, very, very bad examples of exploitation of workers. Uh, that is bad for those workers, but it also undermines uh, wages and conditions in the broader Australian labour market. So Christina Keneally was making the point, um, which is, I think, a sound one, that as we look to recovery from uh, COVID-19 uh, and we look to how the, the migration program will be reconstructed as part of that, one of the things we need to change uh, is the balance between permanent and temporary migrants. And I okay, think that is, a sound, that is a sound policy position, a sound question, uh, given the, what we have seen about the experience of those workers, uh, which is uh, in, in the Australian labour market. Do you agree with your colleague Christina Keneally, though, when she says that we need a migration program that puts Australian workers first and that governments relying on high levels of migration to fuel economic growth have at times arguably been a lazy approach. Do you agree with that? Well, I think, I think what she was referring to in relation to the latter was uh, you know, that the fact that this government has failed to adequately invest in education and training uh, and instead of doing that has sought to deal with skill shortages by way of, of temporary migrants. And, you know, there is an economic problem with that. Look, the, 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 the reality is... Do you agree is, with what she's described, though? Do you, do you agree with what she said? Well, I, I agree that there, there is a policy problem with that. I, I would make this point, if I may, um, Hamish. The Prime Minister has already announced that as of next year, uh, we've got about an 85% reduction in our migration program as a consequence of what's happening around the world and what's happening in Australia and the, the closing of the borders. You know, so the, that, that is one of the consequences of the pandemic. Obviously, uh, as we go forward, we're going to have to look at you know, the, the government... Uh, and others are going to have to look at what does the program look like going forward. Uh, and uh, I think the, the proposition that Christina was putting was that we need to rethink the balance between permanent and temporary migration, uh, and I think that's a, that's a sound point to be making. Uh, Elaine Pearson, do you think Ed Galou is wrong to interpret Christina Keneally's comments the way that he has? No, I don't. And I have to say, when I first read that article, I had the same you know, impression, and then I read it more closely... And I understood that she was trying to make some salient points about migration. But I think the framing of it was, and I don't know if this was deliberate, but it certainly seemed like racist dog whistling, this talk about Australians first, and I found that very problematic. So what do you make of Penny Wong defending it tonight? Well, I think Penny has explained it actually in quite a sort of clear, you know, logical way, but I think... We need to think about this happening in this context of rising xenophobia in Australia. We already had a question earlier about that. And so I think it's really ill-timed to be suggesting we should be, you know, reducing migrants, we should be putting Australians first, especially when we see that temporary migrants in this country are not able to access the care packages, um, the support packages that the government is providing. And so, you know, they're really at risk here. And so we don't want to be in a situation where pieces like that are really used to appeal to a certain segment of the Australian population that, you know, might, you know, want to harbour, you know, discrimination or intolerance towards migrants. Penny Wong, did you just not notice those things that Elaine Pearson did in the language in the article? <laughs> I, I'm, look, I'm giving you an assessment of, of what I think the policy proposition is. I mean, we're a party... Uh, you, you, you have done the, that very clearly, on, but this is a yeah, question well, about well, whether you, on, you noticed the well, same things that Elaine Pearson did. Uh, well, I, I, can, I can say to you 
uh, that I understood the policy proposition that Christina was putting. And I would also say this, uh, you know, we are a party uh, that has uh, stood against racism. We're a party that has stood for multiculturalism for many, many years consistently. Uh, and unlike, you know, the other party of government, for example, you know, we don't do political deals with One Nation, unlike the coalition. Uh, and we have a very clear position about the benefits of multiculturalism. So, you know, I, I hear what Elena said, I hear what Mr Lewis said, and I'd say to them, you know, our, our values are clear. I think there is a reasonable question about the balance between temporary and permanent migration. And I hope this is a discussion the country can have sensibly, because it is a discussion we're going to have to have, given uh, uh, the, the Prime Minister's announcement about the, this very small migration program that the, we will be having next year as a consequence of the of the pandemic. David Sharma. I mean, look, I don't want to engage in a poll on here, but I found the I found an, an odd allocation of priorities that of all the things we need to be talking about to secure Australia's future out of this, we should be having a discussion about um, the composition of our migration our migration intake. I thought that was a strange contribution to be making to the policy. Do you think it was right dog now. whistling? Oh, look, I'm not going to characterise um, Christina's motives here, but I think. You know, there was certainly some nationalist language in there, and um, look, that's for her to explain. I don't, I don't intend to impugn her or allocate a motive to this, but I just don't think it was, it was a wise contribution to be making to the policy debate at this time.